Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for such a wonderful turnout on this beautiful November day. Welcome to the inaugural presentation of the Webster Medallion. The Webster Medallion is designed to honor public service, and we will begin with some introductions. And as you can imagine, we have a lot of public servants in the room today. And so rather than uh, acknowledging you all one by one, we are grateful you're here. But to start off, if you are an elected official joining us today, would you please stand and let us thank you for your service to our state and region? As I look out, I see city, county, state. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for all you do for the region, for Missouri, and for Missouri Southern State University. The Webster Medallion is named for the late Missouri State Senator Richard M. Webster and will be presented annually to an elected official who's made significant contributions to the public good and demonstrated political leadership at the local, state, or national level in the spirit of Richard Webster. I was asked recently by a reporter why the university chose to establish the Webster Medallion. Well, the response was simple. We have mechanisms in place to honor alumni, faculty, students, donors. We have a broad array of recognition programs, but we did not have a way to recognize public service. And so this medallion fills that niche and allows us to say thank you to those individuals who every day work so hard for us at the local, state, and federal level. Reflecting on the university's history, it was obvious when you consider contributions to the region by elected officials, particularly Missouri Southern, that there was no better individual after whom to name this award than Richard Webster, and no more deserving inaugural honoree than the man who occupies Senator Webster's seat in the General Assembly, Ron Richard. Because this is the inaugural presentation of the Webster Medallion, it's appropriate that we take a moment to recall the legacy of Senator Richard M. Webster. While the back of your program contains a brief biography of Senator Webster, we've called on one of the university's most distinguished professors to give us further insight into Senator Webster's advocacy for Southwest Missouri and for Missouri Southern State University. Dr. Paul Tevero earned his PhD in history from Ohio State University and joined Missouri Southern's faculty in 1982. In 1995, he was honored with the university's Outstanding Teaching Award. Please welcome Dr. Paul Tevero. Thank you, Brad. Uh, as a member of a department that has been in this building since it's opened, it's a pleasure to speak about the man whose name is on front of it and whose family honors us with their presence today. The man of whom I speak, Richard M. Webster, played a key role in the establishment of this university. Senator Webster's long and distinguished political career began in 1948 when he was first elected to the Missouri House of Representatives. After serving several terms, including one as Speaker of the House, he waged a successful campaign for the State Senate in 1962. He would win re-election six more terms. It was during his first term that Senator Webster in collaboration with local representatives Robert Warden and Robert Ellis Young, worked on a bill to follow through on a plan that he, Joplin School Superintendent Roy Wood, and several local business leaders had developed in late 1962, namely to expand what had been Joplin Junior College into a four-year college. The bill failed with the governor's veto in 1963, uh, in part because of party and regional rivalries. By 1965, though, the project had become more feasible. During his primary election campaign, the victorious Democratic candidate, Warren Hearns, had supported the pro proposal so that he would gain votes in southwest Missouri. Believe it or not, at that time, the Democratic primary usually decided who would be governor of Missouri. In addition, Senator Webster had worked with St. Joseph legislators to draft a proposal to create two new four-year colleges, one in Joplin, one in St. Joseph, each with its own governing board. Senator Webster had also realized the importance of showing local support for the effort, as well as a site for the proposed college. 
And this was exactly the kind of support shown in 1964 when Jasper County voters approved eight to one a bond issue to acquire the Mission Hills site right here for the proposed college. Senator Webster also overcame opposition to the creation of the Joplin and St. Joseph colleges by adding to the bill a provision to extend university status to the major existing state colleges. Perhaps this deal is what Senator Webster had in mind when he said, you've got to know what other people want and how badly they want it. The bill easily passed in both houses and in a ceremony in what later became Hearns Boulevard here in Joplin, it was signed by Governor Hearns on July 22, 1965. But even then, Senator Webster did not rest on his laurels. The 1965 bill provided state funding for only the third and fourth years of programs at Missouri Southern and Missouri Western. In 1975, once again, working with other members of the Southwest Missouri Legislative Delegation and with St. Joseph area legislators, Senator Webster helped form a bipartisan coalition that secured full state funding for both institutions. I must confess, until this task fell upon me to prepare these remarks, I had not truly understood Senator Webster's role in the founding of this institution. Certainly, when I began my career here nearly 35 years ago, I learned pretty soon about his close connection with Missouri Southern, but I had not properly understood his key role in turning a vision into a reality. And at the conclusion of a particularly nasty election year, I think it's appropriate for everyone here, particularly our students, to consider this example of how in order to achieve a political goal, you have to start, to borrow Senator Webster's words, by knowing what other people want. Just as it was appropriate for Missouri Southern to name this building in recognition of Senator Webster and his role in the founding of this university, so too I think it is appropriate that we honor his memory through the medallion that recognizing the outstanding work of a public official. And in that regard, I think the first recipient is a particularly good choice. Senator Ron Richard has a long connection with Missouri Southern. I have here a picture of him as junior class president <laughs> in 1967. <laughs> Over the years, I've had several occasions to contact Senator Richard about important issues. I think it's fair to say that on some issues, we have been, if not quite 180 degrees apart, usually more than 90. <laughs> but I was pleased and flattered when on a visit to campus a few years ago, Senator Richard, reflecting on, on his experiences in the Joplin City Council and the state legislature, mentioned me as an example of how people who do not necessarily agree on everything can often find common ground when it comes to improving the quality of life in their community and their state. Senator Richard, like his predecessor, Senator Webster, has shown not only the willingness to seek common ground, but an unusual ability to forge consensus among those who seek the best for this university and for this region. Although I did not know Senator Webster, I'm pretty sure that he would prove both of this award and of this recipient. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tevereau. Now you can see why he's one of the most popular professors in the classroom. Great insight. Missouri Southern State University is honored today to have with us two distinguished members of the Lyon family, both sons of Senator Richard Webster. First, and I'd ask you to stand as I introduce you, Richard Webster, Jr., a 1971 graduate of Missouri Southern and the current Jasper County Auditor, and his wife, Shannon. Shannon, please stand. and Bill Webster, a 1978 graduate of Missouri Southern and a former Missouri Attorney General and his wife, Susan. <laughs> you honor us today with your presence. Thank you for sharing with us your father's legacy and allowing us to name this honor in his memory. In commemoration of the inaugural presentation of the Webster Medallion, I would invite uh, Bill and Richard to come to the stage and join Dr. Marble, who will present you a medallion.
Thank you both very much, and we hope these medallions will find a place of honor in your home or office and that they will remind you both of how your father's legacy lives on at your alma mater. It's now my honor to introduce the university's fifth president and a 1979 graduate of Missouri Southern, Dr. Alan Marble. Thank you, Dr. Hodson. Today, as we confer the inaugural Richard M. Webster Medallion, which will be awarded each year to an elected official who has made a significant contribution to public good and demonstrated political leadership at local, state, or national levels, we are honored to have Senator Ron Richard as our first recipient. So let's hear it for Senator Richard. <laughs> And not to take any spotlight off the senator, but we're always, always a treat to have Patty, his lovely wife, with us too. Patty, would you, would you raise your hand? Stand up for us there, Patty. As a member of the first four-year class at the New Missouri Southern Campus, Senator Richard studied business and served as class president, graduating in 1969. And due to his unwavering support, for his alma mater over the years, he was honored with the Missouri Southern's Outstanding Alumni Award in 2003. As a student, local businessman, member of the city council, and all during his time in the Missouri legislature, he has remained a tireless advocate for our mission here at Missouri Southern. Ask anyone on this campus working with the senator and they'll tell you that his quick answer to any question is, what do you need? And we often tell him. Senator Richard has played an integral role in supporting and often crafting several pieces of legislation that has benefited our university. From locking arms with other members of our local delegation to help us obtain university status in 2003, to securing the necessary funds for the current renovation and addition to Reynolds Hall, the expansion and relocation of the Child Development Center, and the construction of a new 20,000 square foot psychology wing for the Gene Taylor Education Building, a project that's now in the final stages of design. Beyond his work as a lawmaker, he's been a member of the Linebackers, the, Boost, the Linebackers Booster Club, a loyal foundation donor, and he's provided several significant gifts to support various important campus projects, such as the renovation of the Lewis, Lucius P. Buchanan Mansion, now the home of our Alumni Center, the Coach Robert Korn Basketball Court in Leggett and Platt, and the Pat Lapira Softball Complex, just to name a few. Senator Richard was first elected to the House of Representatives in 2002 and was chosen Speaker of the House in 2008. In 2010, he was elected to the Senate and was sub subsequently selected by his colleagues as Majority Floor Leader in 2012 and President Pro Tem in 2014, becoming the first person in Missouri history to serve both as the Speaker of the House and President Pro Tem of the Senate. And I think that's a pretty fantastic accomplishment, to tell you the truth. <laughs> the Richard M. Webster Medallion was created to recognize individuals for their achievements in public office, to encourage current students to consider a life of public service, and third, to keep the memory of the great Senator Webster fresh and alive in our hearts and minds. I truly believe that Senator Webster would, be pr would proudly agree that no one deserves this inaugural rec recognition more than the person that we have selected, a man with deep roots in our community and a sincere dedication to this university, our friend and ardent supporter, Senator Ron Richard. Senator Richard. Thank you very much. It's quite an honor. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. I want to thank Missouri Southern, Dr. Marble, Board of Governors, uh, staff of Missouri Southern, my staff. Some of them are here today, Patty Paris, Gwen Delano, who uh, I couldn't do a lot of the outreach to you all that without those two. And of course, Patty, my family, who have helped me during tough and, and sometimes long campaigns. And it's, you know, I appreciate them. 
Uh, it's been a long time since I've been here speaking Missouri Southern, uh, graduating here some years ago. I think Paul probably has the picture of when I was elected uh, junior class president, I think the same picture when I was in the uh, Young Democrats. Uh, <laughs> That has changed over the years, but <laughs> I will tell you that the reason I was a young Democrat is because my buddies said that's the best place to get women and drink beer. And I said, <laughs> okay, all right. And the Republicans were horn rim glasses and pencil protectors. <laughs> well, so I said, I don't want to be one of them. So um, the Webster family has been uh, something that I've idolized for years. Uh, Richard Webster, who I visit with often at the courthouse, talking about finances, talking about uh, uh, what's important in the counties. And then, of course, Bill. Um, he and I have been friends. The very first, I was telling Lance B. Shore, uh, when Harry Mack called, he did this large, large fundraiser for Bill as governor. Uh, out at Ligon and Platt, and they called and wanted to know if I'd write a check for a thousand dollars. And first, I had to see if I had a thousand dollars, and I thought I did. And I've never written a check before to anybody in a campaign. My first and my proudest was Bill Webster. I still think he'd have been probably the finest governor and U.S. senator we've ever had. However. <laughs> I was, I was in uh, the Capitol one time um, watching T. Mark Elliott throw amendment bombs in the House of Representatives, which he was famous for. And I was sitting there, and uh, Senator Webster came by, and he took a quick turn and looked. I happened to be on the mayor of the city of Joplin at that time. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just up watching Surface and Burton and Elliott. He said, well, come on. And, of course, I didn't know then that he was former Speaker of the House. And... Um, so I followed him, and, and what he did was something that's never done, because in the pillars of the house, you never pass. Well, he took right across the house, right through the pillars, to the center aisle. I was right behind him. I didn't know any difference. And took a right turn, went out the double doors in the back, and went over to uh, the uh, senator from the Boot Hill, the, the banking chairman, and, and talked to him a while. But uh, Senator Webster had a unique influence on both sides of the aisle. Number one, everybody knew what he wanted, and he knew how to get it. Um, the same thing happened when Senator Nodler did the university name change out here. He brought together a partnership with uh, Democrats and Republicans, and that all managed to work. And without his leadership, uh, it would have been a longer time getting the university name. Um, I will tell you uh, one fond memory I have of uh, Attorney General Webster's. They were traveling one time. And I told this at, at, at uh, lunch, and I hope I don't embarrass him, but it, it's, it's one of my stories I like to talk about with Bill. Um, Mark Elliott, who was helping in the campaign when he wasn't uh, state rep, called me at late Sunday, a uh, Sunday night. Bill wants to go bowling. Okay. What time tomorrow? No. As soon as he gets done his interview on Channel 12. Okay, okay. I went out and opened up the bowling lanes, and he and I, Mark Elliott, and uh, I don't know, me, Mark Rhodes, somebody else, we all decided to go bowling, which in those days I was doing a lot of, and of course he's an avid bowler, he was pretty good. And we, one thing led to another, we started doing a little gambling. <laughs> and uh, one thing led to another, and I managed to relieve uh, Attorney General Webster of a couple dollars, which I, I had him sign, by the way. <laughs> um, um, but, and we had a margarita machine there, brand new. And years ago, um, since I got elected, I don't do this anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, Susan, would you please put that in the, you know, I don't do this. Uh, but we, we managed to empty that machine, and one thing led to another, and we had a great time. <laughs> uh, the Webster family probably w wouldn't have had this institution hadn't been for Senator Webster. I remember when this building was was started, Gary Burton and Mark came to me and said, we got to go back to the legislature and figure out how to finish paying for this because the appropriations wasn't enough. They had to go through a number of years appropriation. And then Gary Burton and T. Mark 
uh, and Chuck's service through bipartisan effort and went through and got this building paid for, which is another legacy to uh, Senator Webster's bipartisan effort. And I've tried to keep that in mind. As a student of history and a, and, and a traditionalist, um, I'm characterized a lot at the Capitol as gruff and maybe a little bit mean and, and, and not a, have a lot of patience. And all that is, all that is true. Uh, <laughs> Um, I like to read biographies, and I've learned over the years that what's important is how you conduct yourself, which I've always tried to conduct myself with how you would want someone to represent you at the state capitol, and I've always tried to remember that. Um, I've always tried to remember uh, Senator Webster. I even found his old desk and uh, signed the drawer on it, which, which he had for many years in the Missouri Senate. Uh, I think respecting tradition, um, but I'm very serious about what I'm doing representing uh, you at Southwest Missouri and in now President Speaker of the House, I represent the whole state of Missouri. And it's very important that I conduct myself how you would want your son, your father, or your brother to, con to represent you at the state capitol. As far as being gruff, I do not have a lot of patience. I want things to get things moving, and I like to uh, show results. And I know Patty, my wife, uh, is a little bit nervous sometimes. And I get a little bit overbearing, but you know, there's one, there's one great highlight. I only have two years left. So, you know, you have to put up me for two more years. Um, it's been a great ride. One of the greatest honors I've had is being the only, the second speaker of the house from Southwest Missouri behind Senator Webster. Uh, I hope that there's many or more speakers of the House from Southwest Missouri, but I see Senator Webster's picture. If you're, if you're ever in the House and you go on um, um, right of the dais, you see all the pictures of, of the speaker. And Senator Webster's there in 1953, and mine is down to the right. And um, it's quite an honor. And if, if, if I have no more successes than that, being uh, following Senator Webster as Speaker of the House, that'll be good enough for me. But um, thank you for coming. I do. With this bigger crowd, I do kind of feel the need to maybe do a fundraiser. Having this, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, that aside, uh, um, it's um, very gratifying to be honored by your your institution and and uh, my my girlfriend uh, Gloria Turner here. When I was out here, uh, I <laughs> Gloria and I dated uh, when I was out here. Uh, thank goodness she saw the light and married Warren. That was one of her best choices. Uh, so a lot of fond memories. I hope I can help a lot more. And I think we got an announcement coming soon in December about uh, uh, the expansion. And again, it'll be a result of some great bipartisan efforts. So with that, thank you very much. And thank you, Paul, for treating me kindly. I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you again. I knew we would learn something today, but I did not know the Gloria Turner angle. That, that's a new one, so we'll have to learn more about that at the reception. Thank you, Senator Richard. Those were great remarks. We do have students here today from some of our political science classes, and that's one of the benefits of presenting the Webster Medallion each year, is to bring in speakers of Senator uh, Richard's caliber and have them speak to the students and inspire them to pursue public service, to talk about the challenges and opportunities of representing the citizens at the local, state, and national level, and you've not disappointed. Thank you very much. Well, this concludes our presentation of the Richard M. Webster Medallion. Now, we know there are many of you here today that wish to congratulate Senator Richard and reconnect with Bill and Richard Webster, Jr. Uh, a reception has been prepared in a tent on the northwest corner of this building to prevent a crush of people at the front of the stage. I'm going to ask one of our Lion Ambassadors to come down and escort the platform party and, and our honored guests here in the front to the tent. And then if you'll just follow, there'll be plenty of opportunity to say hi to the Websters and to Senator and Mrs. Richard and congratulate them all. Thank you again for coming. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. And go Lions.